Hello Internet! Yesterday we were looking at scriptable objects as a way to manage configuration in your games. Today we're going to be taking a look at JSON and how you can use JSON parsing inside of Unity to do a little bit more with that. Um, so unlike scriptable objects which are sort of built into Unity and give you custom inspectors, JSON objects are just data. It's parsable data in a structured format that you can then use however you like. The advantage here is that this doesn't have to be something that's embedded into your game. It can be a file that you open as your game is running um, that is potentially public to your users that they could or players that they could actually go into, change, modify, and customize the behavior of things in real time. It also gives you an option to potentially store this uh, both online or as a save file and, and use that to sort of store and update information in real time. Um, so Unity automatically ships with JSON.net, so you get the ability to do this without doing any extra work. We're just going to quickly talk about how to do this. I'm not going to deal with any of the file parsing. Um, depending on how you want to do that, that will be different and behave differently. Um, instead, we're just going to look at how you can create objects and parse them. Um, this works for both properties and for fields. Um, so we'll talk about both of those as a way to do this. Um, so what we're going to do is just create a NPC. Um, so here's our NPC character. Um, and so this is just a empty NPC that is intended to update or handle our NPC dev. What we're going to do is just give this some string of our NPC data. So we're just going to call this our JSON blob, so, something like that. And then behind the scenes, we can store this inside of our um, NPC data. Um, so this will be the data re related to that NPC. So the way this works is JSON is a plain text format. So that means it's, it's using normal strings. Uh, and then that gets parsed into the custom objects that you're trying to handle. Um, so in this case, we're going to provide information as a JSON blob and then parse that into NPC data so we can actually use it later. Um, so we don't need an update, but I'm just going to go and add some debugs here. Debug.log. And let's log out our data.name, which we don't have yet, <laughs> um, and uh, data.health. <clears throat> so what this is doing um, is going to, it's going to parse both of these things. Um, this is an interpolated string, which means it's actually going to automatically find and insert the data. You can see here um, JetBrains Writer is automatically reformatting this. Um, so we can actually see those, those are actual types. Um, but what we can do then is actually create this class. Um, so let's create an NPC data class. And we can just create something that stores both of these. Um, so we can have our name and a public int of health. Now I'm doing a field and a property. This is probably not how you would do this. Um, that, that is not, <laughs> that, that, this is probably not the best practice to follow, kind of mixing both of these. Instead, you'd probably choose one or the other. Um, I personally would recommend properties. The way this works is it will automatically serialize things with getters. Um, so they can be serialized and deserialized that way. Um, and so that's how all of this works. You can see everything is now matching up and you can actually get correct associations back to the types that everything matches with. And we can use uh, rich data. So we can have strings, we can have ints, we can have floats. Um, you can even use enum enumerable types, things like that. Um, it also supports uh, nested data. So you can have data inside of data inside of data, even including lists uh, or dictionaries. So you can store pretty complex data structures and data inside of this as sort of a way to define different things, maybe dialogue options, um, upgrade paths, different things. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of options here. Um, and that's sort of why I like this option is it's pretty flexible and gives you a lot of openness to kind of des design things the way that makes sense to you. And then, then you can adopt it and use it yourself. Um, so the way this works is we're going to be printing out this data, but we need to actually write to it. Um, so we're going to do data equals a JSON convert um, dot deserialize object. So JSON convert is a helper class that wraps uh, a, a deserializer and a serializer. So deserialization is going to take a string and convert it into an object. So in this case, we're taking our JSON blob, which is just a string representing our data or converting that into the actual data that we want to use. 
using this deserialize object. The way this works is we give it the uh, generic type that we want to deserialize it into inside of this argument, and then provide the string in here, like this. And that's all we have to do. Um, so all of this will work. We just need to make sure that our string actually matches this. If this is something that you're opening up to players, and even if you're not intending to do that, you probably are going to want to wrap this in some sort of error handling to make sure this works, um, because otherwise things will crash and you'll get errors and things will go missing. Um, we are not doing that right now, um, just, be, just because it complicates this demo. Um, but that is something to be aware of, is especially if this is something that is public to users, uh, then they can change it and potentially get like incorrect data formatting. What if it doesn't match? Things like that. Um, you can cause weird, unexpected behaviors. So something to keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's all we have to do. Um, so in this case, we have our deserialized object. We're just going to go here and attach this to our main camera, like so. Um, once this reloads, <laughs> there we go. So let's attach our uh, NPC character here. And we'll just throw this in here. Um, so the names do not necessarily need to match. Um, the JSON.NET has automatic things to handle different um, capitalization patterns and things like that. Um, so like properties, for example, start with a capital, capital letter. Um, you can use lowercase and it should still find that. If you want to change that behavior, there are settings to do that. We're also not going to talk about those here, but they are there. And so the way this works is we have our name with a thing. <laughs> We're just going to call this test. And then we had a health. Um, so the values are stored inside of strings. And then uh, there's a colon and then the value. So we're just going to give this 100 health and name it test. And that's that. And so if I run this now, our start method will trigger. And we should get a debug message saying test has 100 health, like this. Um, and so that's us deserializing this and actually using it. This gets a little bit complicated. Um, I don't recommend necessarily using a single line string. Luckily, Unity does give you two options to make this nicer. Um, the first one is using multi-line. Um, so multi-line is just going to say, take that string entry blob that we have and give us a multi-line string. So we'll make it three lines long. That is the default. Um, for us, I'm going to say five should be fine. Um, you can configure this however you want. And it's just going to expand that text block vertically. So you can have multiple lines. Um, this, you can do uh, some more friendly for, oops. You can do some friendlier formatting with uh, JSON to make it a little bit nicer. So something like this is fine as well. And everything should still parse. I did that in the wrong order. <laughs> um, so let's redo all of that when we're not playing the game. There we go. Um, and so if we play this now, we're going to see the same thing happen. Um, it's just going to be formatted a little bit nicer. So if you're giving somebody an actual block of text to read, uh, this format is a little bit easier to understand and sort of how everything relates than maybe something else. Um, but everything is still behaving exactly as, as we expected. The other option is using a uh, text area. Um, and so this has two different arguments. It has a minimum and a maximum, and it will expand automatically to fill whatever you've typed. Um, so in, in this case, we can do like one, two, 10, for example. And if, unlike the multi-line string, um, where if you exceed the length, it doesn't add like scroll bars or anything, this will. Um, so we'll actually be able to add extra things. If you're intending to use this inside of the editor for whatever reason, um, this seems like the best option. But also, I would recommend just reading directly from files. <laughs> that can be a lot easier, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility of how you're actually working with this. This is more useful for, for testing or doing other other fun things, but you can see the format looks a little bit different. And if we start just pasting certain things like this, eventually <laughs> we'll get a, whoa, uh, there we go. <laughs> we'll get a scroll bar so we can actually scroll up and down. That doesn't happen with multi-line text. Um, but this is just a few different ways to, to handle this. 
And if we ever want to reserialize things and get things back into our string format, we can do that. So we can do uh, data.name and maybe set this equal from test. Let's set this to Sarah. <laughs> um, and we'll uh, add some extra health. Um, so plus equals 10. And then we can do debug.log. I'm just going to do this directly inline. Uh, and we can use the same JSON convert to serialize the object. And we don't need to provide the type. We're just saying serialize whatever type we give it. Um, so in this case, we're serializing our data. And this will re-serialize that back. And so it gives you a way to sort of load and store data uh, and modify it just like you would normal, normal data. Um, so let's go and run this. Uh, we need to get rid of all this duplicate stuff um, or it's going to get very angry at me. So hold on. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, so we can now run this and we should see our test get printed out and then we should see a second one with our serialized stuff with the extra health. Um, so that's how all of this works. There's a bunch of other things you can do with this. I'm not going to cover all of them, um, but this is just a really quick intro to JSON serialization and how you can do some of this. Um, and it's a really handy way to make like interactive things. Um, I've seen it used very frequently with things like dialogue, um, being able to actually manage dialogue or using remote configuration. JSON is very common in the web. Um, so if you're doing REST calls or something like that, you're probably already using JSON. And so this gives you a way to parse those responses and handle them inside of Unity and do whatever, you, whatever makes sense based on that. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. So hopefully you can use this in your projects. And if you do, I would love to hear about it. So please leave a comment and let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So until next time, see you, internet.